it's a lovely day, Monday morning, and we have a bunch of milk that I need to turn into cheese today. Oh, it's warm out here. It feels great. Look how pretty it is. La la, so gorgeous. There's a rooster. So I was debating today which kind of cheese to make. I am running low on my mesophilic cultures and I need to order a bunch of freeze dried ones. I'm actually in the mood for making a Gouda, something like that. I also want to try some white mold cheeses since we're getting close to Christmas. I was gonna do an Asiago with smoked, shush, with smoked ancho chilies. Well, then I realized that I have another recipe that I wanna try that's called Pepito, no, Tuscano Pepe, Pepato? I don't know what it is, but it's a, a smoked jalapeno and black pepper cheese that calls for a little bit of MA11, which is a mesophilic culture, and just some thermoculture. So I'm gonna use some yogurt. I also know that I can skim Asiago, so I'm assuming I can skim this cheese. It's also an Italian cheese. Because I wanna make butter, I'm a little bit addicted to my homemade butter. I'm going to skim off these milks, see how much I have, adjust the recipe accordingly, and make a smoked ancho chili black peppercorn Italian, Asiago, Thermo, something cheese. I don't know what it's gonna be. We'll see. <laughs> Hurry up, come on. No, come on. Don't knock your There you go. There you go. So the recipe is coming from home cheese making. It is Toscano Pepato. It calls for five gallons of milk, and I think I have one, two, three, four and a half, five. I probably have five here. We're gonna say it's five. Don't mess with me. I'm not gonna touch it. Come. See, that's gonna add an element to your video. So happy that you added an element to my video. So this is eight gallon pot. This is probably right around five gallons. I'm going to add these last little tails of milks in. Heat it to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. The recipe calls for an eight teaspoon of MA11, mesophilic culture starter, which I have, and a quarter teaspoon of TA61 thermophilic starter culture. I do not know what that is, I do not have it. So I am going to use, I'm gonna use a cup of yogurt. And I'm gonna thin this with a little bit of milk that's heating up. When it comes to doing add-ins, according to what I've read, it's two to three teaspoons per every two gallons of milk. For this cheese, it's five gallons of milk. So I'm going to want approximately, I probably want a third cup of the spices. So the chilies I'm using are these ancho chilies. They're dried, got them at some store. So I'm going to take these and seed them, pot, um, chop them up really fine, and then I'm gonna boil them. I might add the seeds in too, probably. And then I will pour the liquid in soon, like now, and before I start the renneting process, and then add the chilies right when I'm putting them into the molds. With the peppercorns, I'm just gonna crush them up and add those in when I do the mold. Let's see how these chilies are. Oh, they smell good, they smell sweet. See, they don't, they're not gonna be that hot. They're more, more gonna be a smoky flavor, like little maracas. Actually, I don't wanna taste the seeds. Don't have much flavor. They don't have much heat at all either. Let's taste this. The skin is what has more heat. Whew. That's, that's delicious. I'm gonna dump the seeds out. This is probably about a quarter cup. I'm gonna do one more, just because these aren't that spicy, and I think it'll be good. Now for the peppercorns, it says about an eighth cup, which is two tablespoons, so I'm gonna do about two tablespoons, I guess.
Yeah, there we go. That's gonna be spicy. Ooh, can't wait. These are starting to simmer. I brought these ancho chilies to boil and then I let them steep for five minutes or thereabouts. And so now I'm gonna strain them off. So this liquid I'm going to add in before I add the rennet and I'll save these peppers till the end. It's at 98 degrees. It calls for MA11 culture. Just an eighth teaspoon I'm gonna sprinkle over. I'm gonna let that rehydrate for a minute. Stirring in the mesophilic culture, MA11, just briefly. And now for the yogurt. One cup of yogurt that I thinned. This just gets a good stir, just to make sure it's all worked in. And now it's gonna ripen for one hour. All right, timer just went. First I'm going to mix up the calcium chloride. I'm gonna do about a quarter teaspoon per gallon, so one and a quarter teaspoons of calcium chloride. Diluted that in a little bit of water. Now that gets added to the milk. And now I'm going to add the juice from the anchos. Add extra flavor. It says three-fourths teaspoon of rennet for these five gallons. So it's a lesser amount of rennet than normal. Dilute it with water. Add in the rennet. And now it says this is supposed to set up in 20 minutes, which is pretty fast. I can't quite believe this is gonna be done in 20 minutes, but we'll check it and see. Timer just went, so it's time to check for the clean break. It's been 20 minutes. I think it might have set up. Look, that looks pretty darn firm. Oh yeah. Look at that. What do you know? So the first step is to, to just divide it into columns, like three fourths inch columns is what it said. Now we let it rest for five minutes to heal a little bit. All right, it's been five minutes. Look at all that whey coming up. So now we're supposed to chop this into coffee bean sized pieces. I'm just gonna chop it. And now it's not quite totally chopped up. I'm gonna keep going, but it's supposed to heat to 118 degrees. So turning that on low heat, that's a 20 degrees raise, a 20 degree rise, though I think it's probably dropped a little bit since it's cool in this kitchen. Over the course of 30 minutes. All right, I'm going to stir this. It says stir every three minutes for the course of the rise, 30 minutes. I'm setting the timer for 30 minutes and I'm going to just kind of stir by hand and break this up for a little bit gently while it starts to heat. Oh, we'll see, there's a big one. It's a cool day, so it feels really nice in this cheese pot. This is a firm curd. It says to stir every three minutes. I'm gonna do it the whole way because I do not want it to scorch underneath and I need an excuse to read more about cheese. See, right there's my just put a stool up there so I can read my book. It's getting hot, I'm just gonna have to get my hand out of here. It's right around 108 degrees, I think. So 10 more degrees to go. I cranked the heat up a little bit higher partway through, briefly, a couple times, just to get it a boost, because it's going so slow. But I wanna show you, I'm concerned about curds that are like this. It said coffee bean size, which more of them are like those right there, are like coffee bean size. These are a little bit big. So I'm still do going with my hand and trying to kind of cut some of those. It's getting pretty close. I just don't want anything that has the moisture locked in. 
And I'm going to show you why, a little science lesson here. I just cut into a bel paese that I made in June. I said, I think the curds have too much whey in them still. I cut them too big and I was concerned there might be too much moisture. So I got this cheese out now today to taste it. And the bag had a lot of whey in it, not a lot, some. And it was a little bit snotty, that sliminess. It wasn't horrible, but there was some there. And when I cut slices, the cheese was really hard. And I could see some of the, like in some of the little mechanical holes, there was some moisture from the, from the whey. So whey had been trapped in there. The flavor of the cheese was fine for the most part. It wasn't great. It was nicely salted and I ate it with crackers and it was good. Like I would have kept eating more, but the texture was just dry in this crumbly dry flavor that wasn't good. So that's a result, I think, of not cooking the curd, like all the curds weren't down to size and they weren't properly cooked and they were still way trapped in. So that's why I'm concerned about these. Here you can see where I cut into it. Can you see the, the white, the difference between the white and the yellow? It's like there's a marbled effect in there. I'm assuming the white is the part that was not cooked as much and the yellow part means it's where it was cooked better. So I think that is the problem. The curds aren't cut to a uniform size and there's whey trapped in there. That's why I'm stirring these and trying to get, breaking these up as I go and trying to make sure they're all the same. This also is going to be a higher temperature cheese than the Bel Paese was. I think that one goes to maybe 106. I can't remember. This is 118. So I think it's gonna get cooked all the way through. Yeah, that's just, that's just my concern. I'm still struggling with getting curds cut to the right size and knowing when they're cooked all the way. This is, for me, this is the hard part. This cheese is, is totally edible. I'll put it in some mac and cheese. I'm making mac and cheese tonight. It'd be good in grilled cheese. It'll be fine, especially mixed in with other creamier cheeses like Colby. Mm, Colby's so good. Gouda, mm. Let's do the squeeze test just to see what it's like right now. It holds together, it crum crumbles apart. I'm switching to a spoon, it's getting hot. It has been half an hour, yeah, 116. Let's test these and see how they're doing. Oh, it's a little bit toasty in here. Squeezing them and look how much the more they stay together that it's like melds together. Oof, and my hand is burning. That one, that's the type I'm worried about. So it's like you tear it open and it's wet on the inside. There is, ab I can see whey trapped in there. That, that's the part that concerns me. This tastes so good, by the way. And they're squeaky. So 117, we're gonna say that's good enough. Turning it off and they're just gonna set and then I'm gonna start scooping out the whey and pouring that off as I go. Oh, yes, it is. Careful, slow down. A little bit more, a little bit more. It's hot. Careful, okay, careful, slowly. Okay, good. Can you help me with the, getting the lid, make sure it's the right kind of lid from the downstairs. The recipe says that I'm supposed to put this into the mold and put like a thin layer of the curd and then you layer in the chilies and the peppers and keep layering. So the whole cheese is like a white cheese and then inside you have the layers of stuff. I'm not gonna do that. I want it all just mixed in and tossed in with my hands because that's what I want. Here's the curds. I'll just dump it in and mix it up. It doesn't look like that much. So here's the chilies. Here's the peppercorns. I am going to kind of like sieve off some of the bigger ones, but I want the bigger ones. I don't want quite as much fine powder. I think this is gonna to be too much. So we'll see. This is a very cooked cheese and it's already knitting quite a bit. That's all the knitting happening there. Let's taste with some of the chili and see what that's like. Maybe I'll hate this. That was nice. That was delicious. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start piling this into the mold. Thermo, the like cheeses that are higher temp, tend to stick to the cloth a little bit. So if you vinegar it up a little bit, that helps. All right. I 
See how all that stuff in there? So I want to strain out part of it and catch it so I can get it into the cheese. It's pretty, I like how it looks. I'm excited about that. I'm using almost all of this. We'll see, it might be too much. It says we're supposed to keep it warm during the, during the pressing process. And so this is, I'm going to just set it in my oven at 90 at, I was just turning it on to like bread proof and let it just go. And this will keep it a little bit warmer since it's a cool day. So directions say to let it press at like eight pounds of pressure for an hour, flip it, then 25 pounds of pressure for four to six hours. And then you let it rest at room temperature for eight to 10 hours. I'm going to be flipping it at the 30 minute mark at the 30 minute mark again. So 30 minutes and then I'm going to flip it. The reason I flip it after 30 minutes when it's a thermo cheese, like really high one, like 118 degrees, like this one is, is because it often starts to like adhere to the cheesecloth if I do not flip it regularly. So any, like, I don't like long waits when I'm flipping, at least in the beginning, then later you can do what you want. It's been 30 minutes. You dump this. Good, it didn't stick. About 10 pounds, 20 pounds, not too much for another 30 minutes. It's been another 30 minutes. So this cheese is gonna flip again and then just be pressed at pretty much the same pressure, right around 20 pounds for another four to six hours it said. It is almost three o'clock now. I'll go to about bedtime and just keep it in the oven. You guys, we got a problem. Um, I'm in the middle of cooking and I, so I took my cheese out of the oven and set it up on the stove on its tray because I thought, you know, the heat from the oven will keep it warm, even though it's still cool in the kitchen. So I was cooking this delicious little apple cobbler and then I was cooking my mac and cheese while it's still in the oven. It's looking great. And then I realized that the cheese was sitting on this tray. I just have, I thought, well, you know, it's gonna be here. The warmth is coming out of the stove and it's gonna like keep it nice and warm, like 90 degrees. I touched the outside of the mold, it's hot. So <laughs> this is the first time this has ever happened. There's always a first time for everything. So what I am doing right now, is quickly, quickly trying to salvage this cheese before I have effectively killed it, which I may have killed it. Right here, it's stuck, the, the cloth, because it was like melting in. It got really hot. The rest of this is pretty fine. And by the way, it's only been like two hours. It still has like four more hours to go at this pressing. So I'm going to try to flip this and see if I can get this out without tearing it too badly. It really stuck, but it's coming. I have no idea what temperature this is. I should probably temp it and see just so I know for future. Yikes, it's really stuck right here. There it goes. Aye, 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 aye. Come on, come on. Okay, so I broke Ryan <laughs> right there. That's all mushy, let me temp it. I'm curious. 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, going in a little bit more, 104. So right at the edge, it's right around 107 degrees. 
Oh, I'm so glad I noticed that. This is feeling fairly firm. I'm now going to get a clean cheesecloth. So you can see this little torn spot right there. Right there, that's a little torn spot. So I think it'll be okay. So be careful when cooking and doing cheese on the stove. Lesson learned. I put it over in the corner there, making butter. You wanna see the butter? I'll show you the butter, it's gorgeous. Look at that delicious, delicious butter. That was my little cheese capade. Free supper, save the cheese, I hope. Yikes. I'll let this sit until morning and then it goes in the brine. To my audio I made a thing with popsicle device that could stick up here and not dangle down off of the tripod. So sweet of him. See here, I'll show you. So there's the tripod, and you put this popsicle thing here so that I could just attach my receiver. So nifty. I gotta thank him. I didn't know he did that. night. Time to return it. Uh, drying up nicely. Hey, it's Thursday afternoon and I am getting ready to go on a walk. Looking really done. A little bit clammy on this side, but not bad. My son said this looks like a Halloween cheese. It looks pretty Pretty bad, like all the peppers, I guess, are like scabs falling off. Lovely thought, eh? Oh, man. Just dumped all the dog treats on the floor. Oh, I'm gonna weigh it. Let me weigh it real quick. No, five pounds. So it lost about half a pound in the whole brining and air drying process. Should take one month. So we're on Thanksgiving. We'll check this one out. This actually feels a little bit more like, uh, it just feels harder, like more like a Parmesan, Asiago, Romano type cheese. So it might actually be enhanced by aging, but I'll probably cut into it, see what it tastes like, and then go from there. There you have it.